Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian. I am here today taking a look at a very unusual and, well, very scarce, uh, experimental semi-auto pistol. This is a Ross automatic pistol. This came from the Ross Rifle Company, which you are probably more familiar with for their straight-pull bolt-action rifles, which were used by the Canadian military. Uh, this pistol was patented really quite early. This is a model of 1903. Uh, or a, a patent design from 1903, and it's one in a series of automatic pistols developed ostensibly by Charles Ross. Um, it, it seems that he picked the, the general um, mechanical design for the gun, but then he gave it to an employee named Barnes to actually do the, the major engineering design work. Uh, Ross provided the, the basis and the general idea, and then Barnes actually turned that idea into a real pistol. This thing is actually really large. Just for some size perspective, here is a Colt 1911. You can see it's the magazine on this thing is massively huge. The whole gun is longer, it's bulkier, it's heavier. Um, if we look at them side by side, again you get a, a good feel for just how big this Ross pistol is. So a few details about this Ross. It is a toggle-linked gun, and we can operate it manually by using this barrel sleeve. So what happens is, there we go, it's got a pretty strong recoil spring in it. What we have is a toggle link right here on the back of the gun, and you can see a series of locking lugs. Those lugs hold the actual bolt, which is this piece, fixed to the barrel, which of course is this piece and you can see that there's an angled surface right here. So this is a short recoil toggle locked gun. So when the gun fires, this whole barrel assembly slides back in its frame rails, and you can see how these two angled surfaces interact and force the toggle to kick up. At that point, inertia sets in and the bolt continues backwards, cycling the toggle like this, ejects the empty case, it then comes forward, picks up a new cartridge, and fails to go fully into battery. Now this, as I said, this was an experimental pistol. This is actually an incomplete pistol. The firing mechanism in it is not finished, um, and just obviously, mechanically, you know, this thing is not ready for, say, a test trial anywhere. Um, so I have to actually push the toggle lock the rest of the way down. This is something that Ross and uh, uh, Barnes would have had to fix and, you know, come up with a way to, to put some positive spring pressure on the very, the last bit of travel of this toggle in order to make this pistol actually work. Now, the magazine on this looks huge. The magazine is huge. It's a double stack magazine, which it's not the first double stack pistol magazine like this. It's also not the first pistol to have a magazine in the grip assembly. Uh, but it is certainly very early for both of those concepts. Now, one might naturally assume, you'll look at this magazine, that this is like a 45 caliber piece. If you mic out the barrel, it, or uh, gauge the barrel, it comes to about 44, 45 caliber. Interestingly, it's a smooth bore barrel. Suggests that this is a, an experimental proof of concept sort of gun. Uh, now, the first thing I did when I was tinkering with this magazine was actually load it, started loading it full of 45 ACP because I was curious how many rounds it would hold. And what we found was that it holds seven and then gets very tight and you really can't, you might be able to force a couple more in but it didn't seem like a good idea. And the feed angle was terrible. Um, the rounds were even all the way up to when there was only one round in the magazine, they were all nose diving and, and hitting the front of the magazine. which. Initially, sounds like, wow, you know, this must be like a placeholder. They never actually finished the magazine design. And then you have to think about it for a minute because this gun was designed in 1903. The 45 ACP didn't exist in 1903. Uh, the first significant use of the 45 ACP cartridge was in the 1907 U.S. pistol trials. And most of those test guns used the 1906 pattern of 45 caliber cartridge, which was very similar to today's 45 ACP, but slightly different in case length. These pistols were actually chambered for the 45 Ross cartridge, which was a proprietary development of 
Ross and his company. So I don't have any data on the 45 Ross. There are some articles out there, but I don't have access to them um, at the moment that I'm recording this video. So don't have a whole lot I can tell you about 45 Ross, except that it is in size quite similar to the 45 ACP. I suspect it's about two millimeters longer. Now the fundamental design of this pistol is very similar to a patent that was granted to Andreas Schwarzlose um, around this time period. There's no proof of it, but I kind of suspect that Ross uh, was aware of that patent and decided that he liked its mechanism and decided to use it as the basis for this pistol that he wanted to have uh, Barnes, his employee, uh, finish designing out for him. The, the guns were initially developed in 30 caliber, probably 30, uh, 30 Mauser, 30 Borchardt. However, the 45, they, they switched to 45, and then they, when it seemed, when they got wind of the, US, the upcoming US pistol trials, they were very interested in submitting a version of this in 45 ACP to the United States military for trials. And there's some correspondence between Barnes and the US, um, the Ordnance Department at Springfield. Um, he was asking for some extensions, he got some extensions, but they were never able to make this pistol fully functional in 45 ACP. Uh, after giving up on this toggle link design, they went on and tried a blowback design, which also didn't work. Um, so ultimately this really came to naught. I am aware of two of these pistols, which it's kind of interesting, they are both unfinished, but they're both absolutely identical as far as I can tell. They both have an incomplete trigger mechanism. Um, this trigger moves, and by the way, this is a grip safety. So the grip safety pushes this yoke forward, which allows the trigger to move fully. But the trigger doesn't actually engage with anything. The blueprints for this pistol show a firing pin in the bolt here, but this example doesn't appear to actually have a firing pin in it. Um, and nothing happens when you pull the trigger and there's nothing back in here to act as a cocking mechanism. It was, uh, origin it, it was designed to be striker fired, but those pieces just aren't there. Um, the ejector is, let me see if I can show you the ejector. This will be a little hard, but... All right, I can't get the camera to focus in well on the uh, ejector mechanism, it's kind of buried inside there and under a lot of spring tension. So, sorry about that. Um, there are some pictures on my website that you can take a look at if you're curious um, to see more detail on that. However, what I can point out is this stud on the back of the frame, which intersects with a cutout on the back of the bolt there. And at full travel, right there, uh, that stud hits the back of the pin connected to the ejector, which pushes the ejector forward, which kicks a cartridge vertically up out of the action. So the designation given to this uh, today is the model of A2. Uh, the A1 had a, a slightly different design to the toggle mechanism. They revised that to this A2 pattern and, and plugged away at this for a while before ultimately giving up on it. Um, oh, the one other... Uh, control to show you is the, the magazine release right here. It's a spring-loaded plunger. You pull forward with two fingers on one on each side, and that has a round plunger right there, which locks into this round hole on the front of the magazine. And it is shaped such that you can simply push the magazine in and it will lock into place. Then you have to manually pull the magazine release out to release it. This idea of having no frame and just using the magazine as the, the grip frame of the gun um, is something that doesn't exist in a whole lot of pistols. Ross used it here, and you'll also find a similar but not identical idea with the, uh, the Noble automatic pistols, which were submitted to US test trials. Those did have grip panels to them, but they had an open uh, front of the, an open front strap allowing direct access to the magazine. So, kind of a weird setup. There's a ton of machine work that obviously went into this gun. Uh, but ultimately, it went nowhere. See the rear sight is machined into the back of the barrel. Well, there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you do like this sort of content, please consider stopping by my Patreon page and uh, helping me out. Uh, a buck a month contribution really goes quite a long way 
to allowing me to travel significantly and uh, continue to bring you guys really cool uh, forgotten trials experimental pistols like this guy. Thanks for watching.